Go. Hello. Welcome to the clinical anatomy session. And you know what is clinical anatomy? The knowledge of anatomy when we apply it onto the patient for understanding his symptom complex that is called clinical anatomy. Now today we are going to discuss one of the very frequently occurring syndrome called carpel tunnel syndrome. So it is the carpel tunnel syndrome very frequently occurring. In whom does it occur? Who are the people who are going to suffer with carpel tunnel syndrome? They are mostly ladies who are going to suffer with carpel tunnel syndrome of age group between 40 to 70 years. Between 40 to 70 years. These people, they are either obese or overweight. They are overweight or they are obese. Or these people, maybe they are suffering with mixed edema, the thyroid disorder, or they are having diabetes mellitus, diabetes mellitus, or they are having or they are pregnant, okay, pregnant at a younger age, pregnant at a younger age. So younger age group women are also involved, they are affected. Then we have got the people who work with ugly postures. Now what exactly you mean with the ugly postures? For example, painters who are painting the roof, okay, and the dentists who are working on the molars, the third molars, the second molars, the typists who are working on the old type machines from morning till evening, they are doing a lot of uh, extra duties to earn their meager income. So these people, they are more frequently prone for carpal tunnel syndrome. Now what is carpal tunnel syndrome? If you take the median nerve, here you see you have got the flexor here you have got the flexor retinaculum yeah now this is a median nerve which is descending into the arm now this is the thumb index finger middle finger this is the middle finger this is the ring finger and that is the little finger now you know the lateral three and a half digits the lateral three and a half digits are all supplied by the median nerve also the palmar aspect also the thenar eminence is all supplied by the median nerve. There is one proper palmar cutaneous branch, proper palmar cutaneous branch which is being given by the median nerve before it enters the carpal tunnel. So this thenar eminence is supplied by the proper palmar cutaneous branch. So the median nerve when it is subjected to compression within the carpal tunnel then we get a symptom complex called the carpal tunnel syndrome. There are motor changes, there are sensory changes, there are vasomotor changes and there are tropic changes, all these four type of changes they occur in patients who are suffering with carpal tunnel syndrome. What are the motor changes? Firstly, there is wasting of thenar eminence. If you take, there is wasting. There is wasting of the thenar eminence. When you show the thenar eminence, you know it is in the form of a thick bulge. But that is appears to be flattened. That appears to be flattened, so that is wasted and you get a deformity called a thumb deformity. This is very important for you to know a thumb deformity because the thumb in individuals is a very important organ. Even in the brain, its representation is very extensive compared to its size. The specific movement it does is opposition, counting of the fingers. So in this case of carpal tunnel syndrome, the thumb is laterally rotated and lies adducted. The thumb is laterally rotated and adducted. So it is called a thumb deformity. Opposition is not possible. And coming to the index finger, the index finger is almost straight like this. It cannot be flexed. 
So a patient with carpal tunnel syndrome can't make a fist. When he's attempting to make a fist, then there is lagging of the index finger. And this is called Benedict sign. This type of straight index finger is called Benedict sign. It is also called as pointing index finger. It is also called as pointing index finger because it is not being flexed even when you are trying to make a fist. And what are the sensory changes now? So there is hypoesthesia of the lateral treant of digits. So here you see 1, 2, 3, okay, 1, 2, 3 and up, the 3 and up digits as I have shown here, 1, 2, 3 and up digits, the lateral portions, they are showing hypoesthesia. Now let us understand what is aesthesia. Aesthesia means perception. You are perceiving and that is called aesthesia. If you say I am perceiving too much, that is called hyperesthesia. If you say no, I am not perceiving anything and that is called anesthesia. So anesthesia, no sense of perception. Hyperesthesia, exaggerated sense of perception. Whereas hypoesthesia means decreased perception. So decreased, sens decreased sensation to light touch or pain prick. So these are the sensations you get, a decreased sensory level you get in case of carpal tunnel syndrome, including the lateral three and of fingers. Whereas the skin over the thena eminence is having normal sense of perception because the, palmar, the proper palmar cutaneous branch is given before the median nerve enters into the carpal tunnel. Then, what are the vasomotor changes you get in case of carpal tunnel syndrome? In uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, the vasomotor changes are first, arteriolar dilatation. Because of arteriolar dilatation, what is happening? The skin is warm to touch. The skin is warm to touch. And because of lack of sympathetic, because there is no sympathetic nerve supply, there is no sweating. And because there is no sweating, to touch, the skin is dry. So the skin, which is present over this three and a half fingers of the palm, so how is it? It is dry to touch because of no sweating and it is warm because of arteriolar dilatation. And what are the tropic changes? The skin becomes dry and scaly in long-standing diseases and there is atrophy of the pulp spaces. Atrophy of the pulp spaces also are seen and the nails become brittle, they are easily breakable. The nails are easily breakable, they become brittle. So these are the different types of changes, motor, sensory, vasomotor and tropic changes what you see in case of carpal tunnel syndrome. And there is something called Tinnell's sign. What is Tinnell's sign? Here the lady who is suffering with the carpal tunnel syndrome, she complains that Early in the morning hours, maybe 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., she gets up from her sleep because she's having a severe pain. Then she dangles her hand out of the bed. She gives a violent shake like this. This type of shaking of the hand is giving her relief of the symptoms. The pressure symptoms are relieved when she violently jerks her hand or when she dangles her hand out of the bed. So that is called the tinnel sign. And also, you should understand, in case of the carpal tunnel syndrome, some patients, they present with edema. You see, there is swelling of the palm and even the forearm. Why there is swelling of the palm? Can anyone tell? It's because the forearm muscles have got forearm muscle pump action. They have got a pump action, the forearm muscles. This action is being lost. And because of this action is being lost, the tissue fluid is getting accumulated. The tissue fluid is getting accumulated locally and once you start giving a vigorous or a violent shake like this, again the fluid is displaced back into its original place and the swelling of the hand disappears. And this is what we call tenal sign. Now how do you prove it? You do nerve conduction velocity tests, nerve conduction velocities 
normally the nerve conduction velocities are 50 meters per second they are 50 meters per second but if it is less than 30 meters per second that means it is a case of carpal tunnel syndrome the median nerve conduction is impaired now what do you do for this you go for the first symptomatic relief okay and here you have to tell the patient in case of mixed edema to go with the thyroid correction in case of overweight and obese people to reduce their weight in case of diabetes mellitus to reduce to keep their sugar levels in control if she is a pregnant lady you can tell her only during pregnancy she is having a exaggerated uh, carpal tunnel syndrome once a pregnancy is uh, finished once she delivers the baby again it can revert to the normalcy but in some people like if they are more than 50 to 55 years of age and still they complain of getting this operation done then you have to cut the flexor retinaculum so the flexor retinaculum is cut is being cut so once you cut the flexor retinaculum all the tendons are becoming free and I forgot to tell you when I said about the benedict sign or pointing index finger where the index finger is not able to flex why the index finger is not able to flex is there is a muscle flexor digitorum profundus the lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus it is also becoming weak because it is supplied by the median now the lateral half of it is becoming weak and that's why the person is not able to flex because of the weakness of the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus the person is not able to flex his index finger this one point you please note it down the lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus is weak hence the index finger is not uh, in a position to get flexed so here you have to go for the cutting of the flexor retinaculum so the flexor retinaculum is being cut open and hence once you cut this then there is release of the tendons and the nerve and the patient feels much better Thank you.